Kerry made it. Uh, win number five in the Islands National Football uh, League yesterday with a win over Galway. Um, with probably more questions than answers uh, as the squad probably heading to Portugal for, for warm weather training. Liam and John were at the game. Liam, um, it was all <laughs> dead rubber type of a game, wasn't it? I mean, t- to be fair, there was a good bit of football played somewhere from after the first 15 minutes until maybe before the last 10 minutes it was it was just kind of a like yeah, a challenge yeah. match it yeah, really it was, was. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it had that kind of A versus B feel about it yeah. uh, the crowd didn't get overly excited in the whole lot um, did Jack learn much? No but I'd say look Jack Jack is happy that he held his Division 1 status and they can go into their airplane now and head off to warm weather to, to do a bit of work and uh, as you saw the forecast today someone was saying that the, the rain there's a lot of rain going to fall in Portugal and Spain so it might be a warm weather camp at all but look it's, it's I suppose look it's a, it's a box ticked uh, we survived in Division 1 10 points 5 wins 2 losses uh, a lot of questions more more questions than answers I think we have come heading towards the championship mm-hmm. um, did we unearth players we, we'll go through it as, as, as the evening goes on we probably we, we did a, a couple of fellas held up their hands like the Killian Burke I suppose Joe O'Connor is, is on everyone's lips at the moment um, no, so yeah I suppose look I was at most of the games with with, the, with Timmy and Ambrose and the radio and stuff like that and no it, did, it just didn't there was something missing this year whatever it was about it, it was the league in general was that way though I mean was, yeah. this time last year I remember we were talking about game after game and how competitive it was and everybody wanted it and, and looked at it it, it 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 has failed, has it? Well, it looks like the teams want to do, win two or three games, and that's it. Then you know, getting to the final wasn't wasn't a big deal, and, you know, and it's a pity. You know, but um, yeah, it's I just like the, even the night above in Dublin, and you know, the, 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 even the first match against Derry, Derry above here, the atmosphere just wasn't. It never got going. Even I know, is it the crowd or is it just the way the content season is? No, is it is it really kicking in or what? What? But there was it like like we said, it never got going this year. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's um, it's it's uh, there's a lot of questions, a lot of questions for the team and about the way the the league is is run. Yeah, and yet John Kennedy. If we had got a result against Derry, which we probably should have had, and if we didn't lose to Dublin by as much as we did, we could be in a Division One final. We could, Donald. Yeah, you know, and that's that was the league. I think that's the way the league was. Very disappointing. I agree with Liam. You know, it was that bite and that competitive edge wasn't there. We've said it for years that all the divisions were really competitive, but uh, Division One this year, look, it it was. Um, there were drab encounters being fair there was no atmosphere there was no excitement and uh, I'd agree with Liam I think maybe it's, it's it's the season like you know there's players playing with clubs right up to December mm-hmm. you're back in you know they'll say it's a McGrath Cup but no one wants to take a break and then you're into the league you just look at the injury count yeah, over all the bodies counties. breaking yeah. down now as well yeah. all yeah. the counties yeah. like Galway yesterday their team was a shambles to be fair mm-hmm. and like without without being disrespectful how Pardick Joy stayed in Division 1 with what he had you know he would 7 or 8 marquee players missing because of the injuries carried on between Sigerson mm-hmm. National League no break playing Sigerson the shows that are Wednesday and playing National League you can't do that travelling up and down the country uh, going right into Championship now and um you know, it's it's. Uh, I think it'll have to be looked at again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole split season project, I suppose, it, it probably needs maybe two or three years to be able to look into it and say, look, it, it, it's very easy to say after the first year's working or not working. You need a, a longevity, mm-hmm. but but now you're asking different questions this year than you did last year about it. Correct. And we're asking the supporters as well. Like you think back, like the game in Killarney this year with Tyrone. Like if Kerry were playing Tyrone in the last four or five years, like you'd be talking ten, twelve, maybe thirteen thousand. There was six thousand there. Same with Ross Common, just under the six thousand. Now the crowds, the people aren't coming out to watch the games. Now our two home games we had in Tralee here no couple of years ago we were looking we were hearing in Radio Kerry the week leading up the tickets were sold out and mm-hmm. that's gone yeah you no know, and there's a reason for that and we yeah. they'll have to find out why the reason is that we probably all know why the reason it is we, but it's we got a comment in about that and I didn't kind of want to read it out but has TV coverage taken away from going to games I mean you, you yeah. before you didn't had, see it you had to go you had the radio absolutely but it wasn't like being there but now you can see it you can see it on replay you can see it yeah. On, on circular you can see it all over the place social media has the, the, the goals and the points up if you never see a match it, does that have an impact? it has there's a couple of impacts that's, that's probably one of the biggest ones the second one would be the cost of it yeah. mm-hmm. you know, because you're going from a club season where supporters are being paying to go in to watch their, their clubs and stuff like that and then 
the game of football itself. Mm-hmm. Not very attractive at the moment. I, I, I'm meeting fellas every day, and that's the first thing out of their mouth. I met a fella today from Cork, yep. and he's 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 not he's not a big football supporter. He's more of a hurling man. But he said watching football now. He said he he switched it off. Yeah. No, because he said that he he, re- he remarked about the old Kerry team, how they was play football, and, and I know it's different style, different eras, and all this kind of stuff. But they'll have to do something to make it more attractive for people to watch it. And yeah. I think just we said the, the Saturday night game in Tralee, like it really caught the imagination before. Yeah. But it's gone, it's gone to a farcical situation. Oh, people from North Kerry leaving home at three and half three for a seven o'clock game, and they're inside in the stand for three hours. I mean, with families, like it's crazy on a winter's evening. Like it's it's not, uh, it doesn't entice people. And like Liam said, the games then the cost, you know, it has to be looked at. But the quality of the football. Yeah. We're not criticising the, the teams. It's the system. It's 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 the rules that we have, and it's the way the game has been played. Everyone wants to go on to see scores, high feeling. We saw it yesterday. Five, five or six long kick outs. Adrian Spillane, uh, Barry Dan, Joe Connor, pull him down to the sky, gets the crowd going. Yeah, we're not seeing that anymore. Yeah. We're seeing a ball kick 13 meters, give it back again. You know, keep 10 passes, and we don't even go forward. We go backwards. People won't go to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Come here, people will have to go to see because we we have a lot of players on the fringe. Let's discuss some of the players on the fringe. Uh, I'll start with John Kennedy. Dylan Casey and Armin Heinrich, um, they've been around a, a, a fair bit now. I mean, they're not new, new to, to the job. Um, Dylan Casey ha- had his chance in the championship last year. He, he's, 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 he's a player of, of decent quality. He's inside. He, he has a county championship with Stax. He captained them as well. Uh, Heinrich, uh, young lad on the way up. Great with Tralee CBS again, product of the stacks. How did they get on yesterday? They did okay. <coughs> you know, they did well. I mean, yeah, Armin went up and kicked a great point. Dylan, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's playing with confidence. It takes time to adapt. And I think that's the positive thing over the league is these guys have come in. Will they start in the championship? Maybe not. But they're going to put pressure on the guys that are going to mm-hmm. start if they do. And you wouldn't be afraid to bring them in. They have the time, they have the, game, they have the minutes under their belt. But, you know, they'll be, Jack will be quite happy with those lads. Sean O'Brien as well. You know, he's fitted in well. He's, he's an option for kick outs. He'll kick the score. You know, so it's, it's a learning process. And uh, the, these guys certainly, they're in there on merit and uh, they've put their hand up. Mm-hmm. Two forwards that we've been following all the way through Darren Roach and Killian Spillane. Uh, Liam, you've been a, a huge fan of Killian all the way through. Um, a big enough game for both of them yesterday because I mean, obviously it's the last round before the championship starts, so they had to shine. How did they get on? They did, yeah. Killian, you know, yesterday stepped up to the mark again, which we'd like to see more often. You know, that, I suppose that's the biggest critic that we would have with Killian is, you know, we know he has it. We've seen him at club football for years and years. Can we get it? more often out of him in the, green, in the green and gold because he's a scorer and, and Dara's the same and what I like about him is they stay close to goals they want to stay close to goals and which was an interesting thing I saw, I saw it was it today that the way Armagh have set up now they have five in the full forward line mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of coming back I can see that from Kieran Donahue because you'll start off with five in there but you'll probably only end up with probably two in there with all the movement and stuff like that with us even at the start of the league we had one in there and we had three or four defenders around David so we're going to need more of a presence in the full forward line and I do think the likes of Dara and Killian can do that role for us because they don't like travelling down the field and if they can stay close to, uh, uh, to, to David and pick up the breaking balls and pick up what David can win because David needs assist, needs assistance in there as well and I think the two boys are they would suit that position down to the ground for me because they're they're natural full forwards mm-hmm. John Kennedy Paul Ganey Stephen O'Brien I mean obviously they own absolutely nothing to carry they're kind of coming back in again I mean they, they've set out for most of the league um, they had an impact yesterday definitely yeah Do you know I mean Paul is, is he's a leader he knows he he knows his 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 option taking is very good. He he won't be shooting from impossible angles. He brings fellas into it and he'll kick the scores. Huge experience, fully fit. Paul Ganey. He looks sharp actually. Mm-hmm. He looks very fit. Passer, he, he, passer, passer, yeah. he was very involved in linking play yesterday. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Traditionally, he's the fifteen. He's, yeah. he's at yeah. the end of the line. He'll take the score. He, he'll yeah. go for it. But yesterday it was it was more swift was, hands, uh, more passing. And it was interesting. He was in the first day. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you know when you're losing that bit of pace inside in the corner. I'm not saying Paul is losing pace by any means, but but when you're coming to the individual it was like Liam Brasson when he was losing pace <laughs> when you come to the you went to the corner like, then it's, it's, where you don't want to go <laughs> it'd be very difficult to play in the so, corner yeah. Liam a tenacious corner back you, that for, that's that but you, you have that bit of space outside and a good footballer will create more space yeah. he'll lay off the ball and he's a great man to link yeah and he had good judgement as well Stephen O'Brien as well um, 
strange enough as it may seem this, this might, might seem we, we were cruising along in a game that I suppose we kind of wanted to win a little bit more than Galway did or maybe we had a bit more quality uh, I think we were 15 points to 8 up then we kind of pressed the button brought on the big guns and uh, the, the wheels came off did they? <laughs> did a small bit <laughs> like we, we were going alright we were going alright next thing the three boys came down the steps together and, and, and on the field and you know, I don't know is it a mindset or what or I don't know what happens but the kind of the wheels fell off the wagon a small bit and they kind of are, are we just kind of looking at the boys and kind of saying here you go now he, he kind of do the rest no, yeah. that 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 can't be happening. But uh, yeah, it was unusual, and I, I don't know. I I didn't think we'd see the boys. To be honest, yeah. I thought there was other guys on on the squad there that more more. You know that you'd like to try and yesterday and see. Yep. You no, know, give them games. Like John said, give them put give them minutes under their belt and and see how they get on. But look, the the, the three boys came on, and it was and a bit too close they, for comfort at the end. To be fair, it was. Yeah, yeah. but that seems to be our league all year. The, the last couple no? of games, I mean, the, the Tyrone was the same. And Tyrone was the yeah. same. We faded out, yeah. and mm-hmm. we kind of faded out against Derry as well. Maybe since you know that we didn't put the pressure on it at different times when we got level and we kind of lost the, the lead again. Um, John, that has to be a worrying thing, surely, because I mean, is that a a loss of concentration is it just guys going down through the gear saying look tis grand we're not going to get beat by too much or we're not going to get caught or we have enough ahead well, what is it or, or, or is, it, is it a mental thing or is it the fitness is it the training is, is, is for some reason do they all kind of just go as far as 80% and then yeah, the engine switch you, off. You've ticked a lot of boxes there, Donald, in fairness. Has to be right. No, but in fairness, I think that they're all contributing to it. Do you know, fitness could be the, the work they've been doing. Um, the mental side of it, you're, you're eight or nine points up no matter what team you are, what player you are, you'll just drop your guard. You'll try things. I think we got a bit casual. Yeah. A few short kick outs that didn't work. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure it out why. Because Shane Ryan had kicked a few boomers out the field and, and uh, um, uh, we were Joe, Joe O'Connor, Sean Dan, O'Brien, Sean Barry Dan. Dan. Yeah. You know, we pulled down some great ball and like, let them have it out there. But, you know, in a, in a game like that, Galway, they didn't know what was happening uh, with Ross Common if Ross Common were to get something Galway had to get something in Killarney mm-hmm. so they were going to stay and go to the very end limited with the quality of player they had but look they got the chance and, and Tom Walker-Lance took the goal and uh, you know it was a squeaky bum time as they say it really was at the end I mean the, the ball going in um, let's look at some of the positives Joe O'Connor man the match um I mean, the game started 100 miles an hour. He had the ball over the bar after about 15 or 20 seconds, which yeah. was remarkable. He, he, I'm slow to say he's defined because he hasn't been found. I mean, he, he was been on. There. He, he's yeah. been there. He, he had that horrific injury that, that that took him out of all last season. And I suppose if you if you look back, you know what a loss he was in, in that mm-hmm. instance. I mean, what he can contribute. So he's coming back off an injury. Um, he was the Kerry captain as well, of course. It must yeah. be pointed out. So he's not defined, but he's found himself back to where he is or where he was or he's certainly getting up there again he's def- definitely coming back into the farm that we all know that he can he can get to you know he's a big scope a young fella very athletic he's tough and what I liked about his game now is he's attacking mm-hmm. you know he's getting scores and this will be important at the latter stages of the year when we meet the likes of Dublin because likes of Finton and, and these guys they won't mark you unless you have uh, you uh, unless you're going to be into uh, kind of into the game mm-hmm. and they'll stand off you and above the last day and I said this one or two one or two times it was the second half kind of Joe realised against Dublin that she said no I'm marking me here and he went and he got 1-1 one, one. No, and he's pushed on since and I do think and even watching Barry Dan's body language yesterday he was driving forward the whole time you know? maybe with the last couple of years we were watching our midfielders and they were sitting around the middle and they were just kind of you know, kicking the ball in and there was bodies inside and it was no good at least now we have two guys or maybe in three with Damon O'Connor mm. that on a given day they can go forward and, and clip on a few scores as well which like I said they have to be a threat yeah. for, especially that, against is, the is bigger teams Is that coming teams. from the training pitch? Is, is that coming from behind in, in Corns where they're trying to get an extra 10% and, and I suppose Barry Dan again last year it was well pointed out he was on the bench more often than not I mean yeah. he might have even missed out on a wedding or whatever he was along the way to, 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 to sit on the bench um, but now he's getting his turn uh, and he's fully deserving of his turn and the driving yesterday and plus the actual feeling as well I mean yeah. he's bringing that back into the game as well um, and you know he's he's a fine man to, to pull a jersey he to is, us yeah, yeah. yeah and he can <laughs> give a belt to his shoulder he's, you know, and that's something we need around around the middle of the field you know, uh, but we don't need monsters out there but mm. we need guys that yeah. can you need this 
Exactly. And and they're definitely two guys between Dermot O'Connor and there. I think we have a three there now. We're going to have two from them three for the, for the rest of the year. Touch wood that they all stay injury injury free. But what I like about them is that we're starting to get scores from the middle of the field. Yeah. Like if you look at the big teams, Derry with Glass and Finton and with with Dublin, they're all kicking through two and three. And maybe you might even be getting yeah. to you know one four from the middle of the field from your two boys, and we need that as well in Kerry. Yeah. They're scoring more. Yeah. Um, John, can you talk about the number three? Obviously, number three wasn't there yesterday, Jason uh, Foley. Um, there's a lot of jigsaw pieces to be put back together to, to fill that. Tyg Morley in there yesterday. Um, done all right, but maybe not hugely comfortable, maybe. No, and it's the first game back there again, Donald. And, you know, the, like we said, you take Tyg out of six, there's a gap. He's, he has that down to fine art. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe not so much early in the league, but he's only coming back. But in, when it comes to championship, Tyg has played there. But Jason Paul is a huge loss. And if we do play Tyg uh, three for the, the start of the championship, you know, the, the makeup of the half back line will be very important because I think, you know, it's well documented up the centre has been a problem for us mm-hmm. Tyke started that problem Jason inside was very sure they're two all-stars um, you know but you you put Graham O'Sullivan back into the mix Brian O'Beckley is coming back again got a bit of game time yesterday which is good but I think three is going to be a problem spot for us and if we put Tyke back there six will be a problem then Yeah, is that is that, is that a, the bigger problem that we know Jason's out people say until the end of the month in championship that's probably two games maybe um, and then you can't exactly walk back into a quarter mm. final uh, having not played because you know you, you, you probably need to get the, the fitness up and the whole lot um, but does Jack just make one change or does Jack have to make a number yeah. of changes it's a good point if you were a manager you'd make the least number of changes you can yeah. but it mightn't be possible in this situation has he already made number three don't think so yeah. and if you put Tyg back then who are you going to play six yeah. you don't play um, Gavin White there you're looking at players you, you, in like Sir Graham who is very right. flexible you know, yes. that, that can play in a lot of positions do you change your defensive style then if you have a different six I mean Tyg Morley has kind of learned Set. that, that yes. craft <clears throat> whoever goes in at six can't learn that overnight either so so do, do, do you go differently defensively you do and I think this is where this this training holiday comes into play because basically these training camps in, in the in, in the warm weather as we call it you can walk through all this mm. like it's very hard this time of the year to be behind in corners and you're walking through and you're talking and, and players freezing you know so that's be, there'll be a lot of this done out, out far and I do think the likes of the likes of Graham who are, Graham's a, you know he's a, he's a cute enough footballer but we need a, a six that'll hold mm-hmm. we don't need a six that's going to be driving up and down the field I don't think Gavin White's our answer no, number six no, no, because no. I think it takes away from his game as well yeah. and in fairness Liam Graham has been up and down the field for us like yeah. he's popping above in the full forward line you know you're going to curtail his game as well it's somebody that's going to play a negative game yeah. play on the D and not move and keep that gap closed don't worry about tying Morley behind her correct yeah well, we'll have to find somebody. Um, if you have an idea about it, 0667123666 or you can text us on 083 300 300 after break. We'll be talking to Dan Kearney and we'll be talking ladies football. Now the Kerry Senior Ladies football team are heading back to Crow Park to see if they can win back-to-back Division 1 um, National League titles after they secured their final spot of course with a win over Galway at Fitzgerald Stadium. Also yesterday of course it was part of the double header. Um, Dan Carney was there t- to watch it. Dan uh, got over the line. We done what we needed to do maybe? Yeah exactly. Uh, did what we needed to do and uh, Darren Long even said it after after the game. It was like, it was like a semi-final really you know that uh, the performance wasn't a huge factor. It was all about getting the result, and uh, and they did, you know. And uh, in fairness, Galway put it up to them pretty, 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 pretty well, like it must be said. And uh, Galway, of course, uh, fighting for uh, their future in Division One uh, for next year. But uh, they came down and and they they really harried and they hassled Kerry and and they came at them and everything. But in the finish, it was it was Kerry's quality really and and quality off the bench uh, again. Uh, that that won the game for Kerry, like you know, and and uh, of course Hen Oden, whose goal in the 50th minute uh, it made all the difference. Like that was that put Kerry three points up, and you could visibly see uh, Galway heads go down after that. And uh, you know Kerry Kerry maintained until the finish, and uh, they went on to win the game. So you know, good result, and uh, back in the final now on April the seventh. Mm-hmm, absolutely, of course Hannah coming off the bench, scoring one two. Um, something that we'd normally say Louise Murray Hurtick was doing, but Louise started yesterday. Uh, she was well. well uh, marshalled as well for, for long stages by Galway um, the one thing that I noticed about Galway was that of all the teams we've played so far they, they were the first gang that kind of maybe had that more physical approach maybe they, they, they were certainly stronger 
Yeah, definitely. Like I suppose, look, like like I said, they were they were fighting uh, to remain in, in Division One, and they're they're still there. They still have one game to go, a postponed game against Waterford, you know. And they're they're a pretty good side, and they're like they were aggressive. And and they were physical, and you know they didn't stand back from Kerry, and and it was a great, I suppose it was a great contest from a Kerry point of view that they got a game like that ahead of the National League final. Uh, but look, essentially, I suppose the referee left things flow as well, which which was the right way to do things. Like you know there was uh, there was some good uh, tackling going in there that that a lot of other referees would would have called, but but it made made for the game, made for a better game. Like, but in fairness, Kerry stood up to it. And like the, the one good thing about it, like really, and, uh, was that when when the pressure came on Kerry, they responded because I suppose look they, they started in, uh, like a whirlwind. Like mm-hmm. I mean, they were one three to a point up after fourteen minutes, but then they didn't score again until the third minute of the second Same half. Yeah. So Galway, like Galway, rattled off five in a row. Like so, you, you know, in normal circumstances, you're kind of saying, you know, where, where's the bit of inspiration going to come from here? But in fairness, to Kerry, they they stuck at it, and you know sides were level a couple of times in the second half and, and you know Galway, Galway got two in a row then and, and, and they level matters again and then came Hannah's goal and, and Kerry Kerry were able to you know they were able to move on from there and, and, and finish it out like I said but uh, no overall it was, it was actually a very very good test uh, for Kerry like and I, you know the great thing about it is that Kerry look back at it and say we didn't play well but isn't that ideal when you're coming into mm-hmm. a final like you have loads to, to work on loads to improve on like so yeah look Galway came with, with a plan and uh, nearly worked for them but uh, no Kerry thankfully came through in the finish yeah a bit more quality um, talking about quality performances um, Kayleigh Cronin I mean she, she has blocking down to a fine art at this stage um, yeah. huge moments there just before half time yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was um, Shauna Hines passed into E4 Rourke and and uh, or no, that was that was actually that was actually later on in the game. And Mary Ellen yeah, made, made a goal, great save. Yeah, yeah I'm, I was thinking of that one. No, but you're dead right. It was just right. It was just right before half time. It was when Nicola and, Ward was uh, going in there and Rain again for the ball. Yeah, and Kaylee, she just threw her body in front of it. She yeah. just, as she's done many, many times, and she just, it was, it was like a certain goal only for her. It was absolutely magnificent into the lowest uh, road into the ground. What, what a player, though. I mean, what a player overall. I mean, she's, she's uh, kind of gone in at centre back there this year, um, with, with, uh, Emma, Emma Sherwood, uh, stepping out. So and she's done an absolutely fantastic job and like she's kind of a, a character that never say die type type character and she's physical she's strong but she's a bloody good footballer as well like so she's I thought she was absolutely excellent yesterday uh, Kaylee Cronin yet again and she's a vital cog in, in this Kerry team because like that she has serious leadership qualities and uh, she kind of does all her talking out in the field you know but she she is a serious player and and that fair in fairness that block just before half time was one of the big highlights of the game yeah absolutely and of course Mary Ellen Bulger's um, save as you mentioned it there yourself um, a, yeah. a, a massive save as well for um, the girl going back into goal as well yeah. um, Dan Arma um, obviously knew they were in the final um, did they put out their yeah. D team or E team or F team <laughs> against Dublin or what did they put any I'd team out as well I'd say, they, I'd say they picked up a few girls after mass or, or something <laughs> like that you know or, or, don't be or like Greg McGonagall now don't be doing that to the poor man um, but there will be a serious threat in the final I mean to be fair to them the, the, the only team that have beaten Kerry is Armagh uh, and I suppose you know the, the, the best two teams in Division 1 are in the final yeah there's no doubt about it look I suppose look they, they made nine changes for the game against Dublin and, and Dublin really went to town on them like I mean Dublin were hoping that uh, Galway would turn over Kerry and, and that would put, would have put Dublin in the final but they, they really you know I mean they still put seven goals past them and, and kind of destroyed them really I don't know was it 23 points or something like that in the finish like mm-hmm. but uh, look they'll have their, their strongest team back again for the final um, they won't fear Kerry like they've turned them over above an armagh now, albeit Kerry, Kerry had a number of goal chances that day that if they had taken, they, they would have come out of the game with, with a win, I, 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 I feel myself. Like, look, Amy Macken was very, very strong that day. She's going to be a serious operator again. Kerry are going to have to have a plan to, to shut her down. And I'd say the, big, the 
the best thing you can do with Amy Mackin is stop the ball from coming to her if mm-hmm. you if you at kind source, of yeah. eat out of, out the field. Yeah, that that's the main thing. Like you know, but it's going to be a very very good game because there there are two sides that like to play football as well, and uh, the wide open spaces of Croke Park. So yeah, it's going to be a great contest. Like you know, and particularly like I suppose there's a national title on the line, and then down down the road you have the Munster Championship in uh, a few weeks after. Like so, it's it's great to be playing this uh, level of football uh, at this time of the year, really. Mm-hmm. And it's great to be talking about the Kerry Senior Ladies going to back to back Division One titles, uh, and I suppose very much on that vein. Of course, that 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 was a thing that Cork were doing uh, night overnight and year after year, uh, all the way through for the last twenty years. But sadly, no more in Division One for Cork relegated. Yeah, Cork going down to Division Two. Yeah, I, I, you know, me's dished out a bit of a hiding to them again uh, over the weekend. Look, it's it's kind of tough enough times for for Cork ladies football. Um, of course, they've had a few retirements. Uh, in the last few weeks, you know, some like the, the Sullivans and and a couple of more players, like so. Look, it, it's when you're losing that quality and and the type the player coming through isn't as good. It's very very hard uh, to to maintain it. So look, they're going to be rebuilding again. Uh, they're not the force uh, that they, they were, and and it's going to take them a while. I feel uh, to come back to anywhere near uh, what they what they were in the past, like. So look, it's, I suppose look, it's it swings and roundabouts in a way. Look, carry her on the up, cock around the downward pass. It's not the worst thing in the world, is it? You know. So <laughs> <laughs> the, pen, the pendulum does swing. To be fair, it just takes a while for it to do it. Listen, Dan Carey, yeah. t- thanks very much. Um, obviously, you, you you will have your crow park ticket booked way up there with the crows and the whole lot. Uh, yeah, you, you will bring extra gloves. It's, it's quite cold up there, um, yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah, well. absolutely. But it's great to be going up there, um, and we yeah, will. Yeah check in with you maybe in two weeks time um, all going well and if it's not going well we'll still check in with you that. and that of course was Dan Carney talking about the Kerry Senior Ladies winning um, in Fitzgerald Stadium of course um, a couple of comments came in about that Liam uh, the game in Fitzgerald Stadium the double header and the whole lot and how fantastic it was and there's thousands of absolutely fantastic things it was a bit disappointing though the amount of people that ran out the gate though <laughs> I mean mother of god like I mean here you have a team who's going and uh, you know it's kind of funny it throws it in if the game had started before it people would say well you know they were coming to see the men's game but you know people kind of clearly exited the doors fairly quickly it is and I suppose look the, the fellas that left there must have been a reason why they left but I suppose the bars and they were thirsty and the hidden hidden down the town but yeah and, and it's and it's a pity because look this is like we said last week this Kerry ladies team at the moment are probably one of, one of the best Kerry ladies teams we've seen in a long time and like, and like we said we've seen a lot of good ladies teams probably not I was probably a bit young John I probably remember that day but yeah look but look they got over the line it was all about getting to the getting to the, the league final and I suppose they got to a league final with a lot of with a lot of pluses as well they've tried out a lot of players mm-hmm. there's a lot of names there now as well no, the, the, and the one criticism I suppose I had last year after the all Ireland final was I suppose was the bench and a couple of small things and they seem to have improved in that so it's um, it'll be interesting now with this Armagh this, this Arma again because Armagh seem to be like Kerry last year they're coming in at a high and um, Kerry are probably up there now with, with the big teams and I think it's important that if they could go to Dublin the next day and put mm-hmm. on a, a, lay down lay down the law and maybe come away with the with the title again and that really put them up there for contenders for Darl Island for, yeah. for Darl Island in the game. And Greg McGonagall, former Dublin manager actually, who, who couldn't get over that great Cork team for a number of years, former Monaghan manager and while he was the Dublin manager as well uh, he's second in charge with Davy Burke and Davy Burke of course is with Ross Cobb now as well so a lot of experience there as well uh, we'll certainly look forward to that game. A uh, couple of comments coming in lads, no disrespect to any Kerry player but it's way too expensive to go watch teams operating at 50%. Weather and conditions have been horrible for the entire league. All Ireland final tickets can be got uh, can be got the l- last few years or can't be got the last few years I'd imagine. Uh, no sellouts at Croker's. Uh, it tells its own story. Um, yeah, I suppose that there's an element of truth in all that. Hi Donald, I cannot understand what happened to the Kerry team. They seem to be afraid to kick long. Gavin does great runs uh, taking the ball I can't get myself to pay to go and see this horrible game anymore um, when we started this show a couple of years ago that comment would be maybe on its own or there'd be one or two but it's, the it's, longer yeah, we're going the, yeah. there, there, there's more and more people feeling that way about football yeah. now and feeling that way it's a big commitment to, to get into the car to drive and 
like you said yesterday, it was only three or four times, John, that the crowd kind of got entertained yep. and they were from high catches, they weren't from goals. And it's not a carry thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the condition it's of football. It's the condition yeah. of football, yeah. It's, Is this why you, Eamon Fitzmaurice and all the, the, the brains of football exactly have to sit down and have yeah. to do yeah, something It's a tough job in that hands, to be honest with you, you know. Yeah. Uh, because, look, it's, it's all about winning at that level. And we've been at several games, Liam, myself, over the last number of years, and, and you'd say, after 20 minutes, you'd say, you feel like going home. Yeah. You know? but and that's, but, the, but, that's a problem. Like. Yeah, but if you're a player, you go to win, you want your all Ireland medal. I mean, th- th- there's nothing in the, the rule book that says I have to entertain you as well. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I, 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 I have to win. Connor doesn't care Great what talk. we yeah. say around yeah. the table yeah. here. Like, he wants to win all Ireland. Yeah. No, it's but uh, no, it's the it's the hierarchy that have to sort this out. It's not it's yeah. not to the it's not the chairman of the county board or it's not the Kerry team. It's it's a high it's a big problem because it's the it's just not attractive. You yeah. Know? When we see rule changes coming in, and it's like what I said earlier, it takes a while to kick on before we know whether it's a good rule or a bad rule. But the rules that were brought in haven't added to no. the attractiveness of the game and we're always kind of tinkering at it and trying to say oh if we bring this in now it'll be great and the mark for example sure I mean people were jumping around the place yeah. saying nobody can high field we'll bring in the mark but it, it's destroyed the game in a sense isn't it it's destroyed I mean when you when you have a guy just kicking maybe 15 metres outside the, t- the, the 45 a, a punt pass into the chest yeah. that's not what the mark was brought in for yeah. the yeah. mark was the idea was good bring it in and the idea the mark that head, time like, was no. the midfielder when he caught a great yes. ball and he came down and three or four fellas swarmed around him yeah. that it was unfair that was for the mark mm-hmm. not for a corner forward to catch a punt so kick. Rob Finnerty yesterday caught two fairly yeah. handy balls ahead yeah. of yeah. Tyg Morley down his knees wasn't there really he, he got two points you know, yeah. Yeah. and you see if, if the mark wasn't there Rob Finnerty would have to take on Ty Morley mm-hmm. and maybe go for a goal. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, it took away that little bit of a spark as well from the forwards. And several but times, Liam, you'd see a wing back up there and he winning a mark yeah. when he could catch the ball and take it on and he kicks the ball wide from the mark. Right, yeah. Do you know, it's, you know, I don't think he's improved the game, this mark. I don't... It is concerning that Kerry are allowing teams back into games that they seem to have control of. They'll need to be more ruthless in the championship. That's from Charles uh, out there in North Kerry. And uh, a bit of a comment coming in here. We're going to read through it. Hi, Dole. Uh, it's always the same problems with Kerry. They don't take their points unless they're 15 yards from goal. Uh, the first half losing position uh, and too many wides. Uh, they should have won by six or seven points. They allowed Galway back into the game. And unless they start kicking points from 30 or 40 yards they won't be going too far in this year's championship they can't depend on the three boys to put the ball between the posts all the time they left in a cheap goal uh, and the goalie was out on the right hand side of the post uh, what was he doing there uh, Shane Ryan should stay in the goal post uh, and that's from Eilish over there in Tralee just around the corner I'd imagine um, yep yeah, absolutely Eilish all, all your points are there um, can I just ask a question about the style of football John when you were playing it back in the day obviously when people win it's a great style and it's fantastic and the whole lot and were people talking about the style of football that you were playing in St. was great or were people saying God it was much better in the 70s when Mick O'Connell was lording up and down the field it was even better in the 50s when you look back has this been a cyclical thing that keeps changing that people have this idea of what we should be doing or when you were playing it was it truly the golden age like you see it, it's there was a lot of bad games in old time see Liam he won't say no will he no there was <laughs> a lot of bad games years. in old time Donald too and you'll see the golden years even like you'll, you'll close your eyes at some of the passes it was some more like, one and one stuff was, exactly and you, had your zone, you had yeah. your zone maybe Pat Spillane used to come back before his time he'd be back around half back line but you had your zone it was man and man and you beat your own man and like when you did you get it to the next line did any team come along the time that you were playing and say God we can't take carry on 15 versus 15 and no. try some defensive no. strategy try anything at all no no team like if, if Clare got an awful hiding off a couple of times Tip got a couple of hidings along the way a lot of Connacht teams and also teams got hidings along the way surely some men during the 70s and 80s decided okay the next time we'll meet these now we'll be tight we'll be this we'll be that that never interested and I suppose Dublin brought it to the level and then the wire followed on and like they, they were a superior team in every way football wise but fitness wise they brought fitness to you know it, it's it's not it's not a lie to say that the wire the 25 training sessions 25 nights in a row and like this training was horrendous uh, but the team was super fit and, and Dublin were Cork were probably the, the second best team in the country at the time or the third best but that was it but the, the standard was terrible like I mean you know uh, Munster it was a cakewalk as you said about Clare with all due respect there was no contest apart from Cork mm-hmm. you know Leinster all you Dublin and Mead Maybe not time someone come from the North Monhan did it one year. But look, uh, it was poor. 
the standard was poor, but you had three, three or four exceptional teams, and that's and that's the way it was. And it's it's something similar now. Right, county league, poor, good, exciting. A lot of it was, it was the conditions were bad the weekend, Donald. Pitches but there was a lot, heavy. yeah, pitches were heavy. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of uh, tight games, a lot of draws out there, and uh, you know it's a good start. It's good for Team to be back playing again. And we need good PROs too, don't we? Oh yeah, to, to get the results out yeah. there. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear about the PRO who had to come off the bench and score a point t- to get a draw? No. We'll talk to him after the break. <laughs> <laughs> now the county league got going at the weekend, and there was plenty of games played all over the county in all sorts of conditions and all sorts of pitches and all sorts of ways. Teams with fifteen and some teams with fifteen subs. Uh, my next guest on the phone, he was sitting there doing what most JPROs do: they be putting on the score and taking down the score and the whole lot. And lo and behold, he got the call to come on. And of course, we couldn't have the score anymore. But Matthew Sean O'Griffin uh, got the call, entered the call for his club, and off onto the pitch. Um, Matthew Sean. I, I presume you will have to give up the PRO job after this, will you? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know really. Um, I thought I can do my best to to do both. Um, uh, to, to the hard one to do to, to, to sweep and play. <laughs> you didn't think of bringing the phone with you, no? Uh, I debated it. It's all right, but I think <laughs> the conditions now, the, the waterlogged field and stuff, wouldn't wouldn't. <laughs> My, my van fell to take it off you. Come here. T- tell us what happened for the listener who's at, at home saying, "What's all this about?" Uh, yeah, I suppose we're just as a PRO for the club, we're trying to keep the people at home updated with scores and stuff. So we're tweeting away um, by right, probably not on the bench, um, of the updates and the scores and stuff, just to keep them up to date. Um, and I suppose then I did my best, and I got the call in from Tom, the manager, to, to go on. And I kind of looked around and I said, Christ, what will I do now? With So I left this, the phone on the side of the field, hoping maybe one of the other lads would take over. Um, but that unfortunately didn't happen, I suppose. Um, and then there was a pause, I suppose, on our Twitter feed for a while. Um, <laughs> were were you yeah, hit or behind when you went on? Um, I'd say I, we were ahead if I'm correct but I'm not entirely sure I think we were I'd have to go back and see where the break the break in Twitter was <laughs> <laughs> the score um, and of course you, you you got a score as well didn't you? Um, or is that, yeah, yeah, is yeah. that a rumour? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's true. It wasn't up on Twitter, um, was it? I, I, it wasn't up on Twitter, so it can't enough. be true. <laughs> yeah, no, surprising enough, it went between the posts anyway. Good stuff. Come here, look, um, Liz Paul, we had him on last year, of course, he won the novice. Um, and I remember talking to the manager at the time, and he's saying how difficult it was to get a team out week on week. And God knows that the WhatsApp group may be on the Friday before a match, and, and you might have 11 or 12 or 13 players. What's it like this year? Have you, have you got decent numbers for the first game anyway? Yeah, it was good. I suppose we have about I said we had twenty maybe tagged off yesterday. Um there thereabouts, maybe twenty one. Um with three young fellas come in now this year as well, which is good. Um so they're pushing for their place on the team as well. Um one of them key in the starting and we two of the lads on the bench as well. Um so there's always a bit of competition there, mm-hmm. um, at this time of the year and it's good, like and you you need everybody really. Do you know that it's than just the 15 that are starting to the lads on the bench as well that need to come on and I suppose do their part as well Absolutely and of course it is Division 4 it's a, it's a tough enough division um, the draw against my van I mean that's certainly a good result Yeah um, I suppose yeah, we, we could have won and we could have lost at the same time I think we were up by two points with a minute to go and they went up and got a goal so we had to put the heads down and try try gain something back so we got went up and got a point and uh, thankfully I think it was Cormac O'Kanada got the point there to, to level it out so at least we came away with something um, so I think it was very important to get off at the start of the year with a win or with a point mm-hmm. do you know so at least we did that do you know? it's it's one one box ticked I suppose it's better than the last anyway absolutely and of course you'll have to find either an assistant PRO or you'll have to ask the manager you're starting the next day will you? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe he, just to take or to start me or to come up with some new system instead. Um, <laughs> I suppose Kev, Kevin or Cahill could be tweeting sometimes if he's available to go as well. And Ty Evan, he was up here all last year as well. He was great for the Twitter for tweeting. So it depends on who's available, really. You know, um, everybody will help out where they can. So it was just my day, the last day to do it. 
Yeah, sure. That's that. That's what club football is all about. Matthew, Sean, everybody helping out the best they can. Um, Matthew, listen to the great story. Fantastic. Uh, hopefully, there's a couple more points in you before the end of the year as well. Uh, and and the best of luck to this ball as well, playing in Division Four. And of course, best of luck to SD. I think they won at the weekend, uh, John. Yeah, a good start done. Like uh, I know Tom Baker well. We came across him last year. Great, great, passionate man. That's the reality of down those divisions. Numbers tight, and uh, you know we had a great start. We had uh, we had three three lads there: uh, Mark Odunho and um, uh, Tommy O'Neill, Liam Lawler transferred from Beale, and we had Barry Shannon from Bally Dunho. And of course, the next item, talent Oshin Healy. He's for senior county league game. Uh, he scored two goals. It was a great start. But look. Is two points and, and like Matthew Sean said there it's a box tick but there's a long season ahead look she's leaving this on like Man City they do yeah it's we went into the transfer market all now I nearly want to tug up myself <laughs> listening to that now <laughs> <laughs> he, he, might, he might break the fair play spin <laughs> he might be docked four points or something come here the um, well these are the stories I mean we had the county league on, on, on last week obviously division one everybody talks about that Um the airport derby. Explain what oh, that yeah. is. That's a massive. It's like <laughs> Sky Sports. The whole lot. Yeah, the airport is current cor- fires. Yeah. It's um, I suppose. Look, yeah, we're, when we're, there was no airport, what was it called? We're both we're both into the runway. So <laughs> <laughs> we're at the start of the runway and they're at the finish of the runway. So I suppose some genius came up with it. Some nice. It's a great name. It, it's a great name for it. And it kind of has stuck on. And look, it's no, it, there. It's it's it, like fires and Cora was never really a big rivalry, but yeah. in the last couple of years we've been meeting them more often. And it has it has turned out to be a bit of a rivalry, and, and of course, maybe in the a good name for it, the airport rivalry, rivalry. And of course, you have to, Joe Wallace Park has to to have the game towards the night under lights in Carson. Under the lights, yeah, yeah, the yeah. So because I, I suppose across the board for everyone, pitches are so bad at the moment. But uh, I think there's one of the core players has um, a bit of a stag as well the weekend. So <laughs> fair play to Fireys, they've, they've agreed to to play the game. You know, so it's just get it done and play. Just yeah. get it done and um, play. Yeah. John, very quickly on that, I mean. There's people out there tonight struggling to get the pitch for their under 13s yep. and under 15s. Yep. There's yep. games being cancelled, minor games can't go ahead. Um, fields are in an awful state. Yeah, they're in an awful state. And you know, on that at the weekend, we played fires away. The pitch was immaculate. Uh, but I'll tell you, the dressing rooms and, and the setup around it was absolutely top class. Great credit to them. It was, it was like a hotel inside, and it's been fair, you know, clean, fresh, and uh, well kept. And, you know, it, it says a lot about a club. When you see the dressing room, you see the, the, there's a bit of pride. There is there. the surroundings. You know, then there's guys working here. But, like you said, it's going to be a big problem on Dolan pitches because unless it's an all weather pitch, you know, they're not playable now. And big, big problems. You didn't concede. You didn't concede the score when an airplane came over. That's a no. good trick in Cora. You know when the airplane is landing, the opposition looks up and then you might sneak a goal because it's a big novelty. <laughs> 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 so we have that little trick. So we try to plan for the airplane to land. Ourselves <laughs> and Ryanair and Cahoots together. A huh? uh, couple more comments, Donald. Um, Tom O'Sullivan at six with Paul Murphy sweeping behind uh, on front of Morley uh, is an option. Lads, I think Mike Breen at six is the obvious one for me. That's uh, uh, Neil Ferreter from Denor and County Mead thanks for joining us tonight uh, Brendan in Boston uh, hi lads the Galway team put out yesterday didn't do justice for the players trying to make an impact on the Kerry management once disappointing league and worse it will get now Donegal are promoted uh, yeah Donegal are back into Division 1 uh, Brendan um, uh, to be honest I think we should have allowed most of the starters to finish the game and see that they were able to bring it over the line without the Cliffords guys were more willing to have a pop at the target successfully we'll need the Cliffords later in the championship that's what we kind of touched on earlier without maybe putting it as, as good as that Um Liam said he was surprised to see the boys coming on the field but obviously they, they, they were on it if you're a player and, and you know that you have a game to make an impact and it, it might be your last game obviously it is the last round of the league um, and you're withdrawn at 40-45 minutes are you kind of disappointed or are you kind of saying Liam God I, I wish I had more time or uh, or, is this, or is this something that's discussed beforehand and, and people I don't know? know. If it's discussed beforehand, but I suppose players understand now that you do your bit for 40 or 45 minutes and, and it's not, like, it's. we all know it's going to take more than 15 players to win in Ireland. Ireland. Um, but yesterday was kind of a game where I thought personally that you could have got more minutes in 
these fellas, you know, the, the, the lesser names uh, under their belt. And um, yeah, it was, it, to me, it was a surprise to see to see the two Cliffords because we were going okay. I would like to see more of, like like your list, listener said there, the other fellas were taking pops, a shot, pops a, at the goals as well. And, um, you know, when, when the big boys come on, then maybe it's just like we said earlier, you just pass the ball to them and let them be doing, doing their stuff. But mm-hmm. it always, doesn't always work like that. Yeah. Donald, uh, Francis, uh, Francis O'Callaghan from Palace. Uh, good evening, Francis. Um, it's the style of play, Donald, that is wrong. Uh, I watched a bit of Kildare and Loud Saturday night. I turned it off brutal. Uh, might I add, we're going nowhere with our style of play. Again, as I said, John, at the start of this two or three years ago, you might have got the odd comment about this, but mm. it's regular enough now, isn't it? Oh, it is, Donald, and you know, like, it's it's not so much our style of play, but like your listeners said, it's the style of play that the teams are adapting, it's about getting bodies behind the ball, and it's keeping possession, waiting for the break, do you kick the ball into a crowded area, you're going to lose possession, you mightn't get it back for three or four minutes, so that's it's that's why the, the, the committee is put in place, they have a difficult job, you know, we all can see what the problems are, but remedy those problems. And what what will management teams and teams do then to come around those again? Because they always come up with, with something. But look, certainly, it's uh, league football, uh, to contradict what we've said here for the last few years, I think this year was a, a damn squib. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't pretty to watch, and hopefully the championship will improve. But I can't see much of an improvement through the Munsters campaign until we get to the to the knockout stages. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about one man, and we've only about 60 seconds to talk about Clare and Mark Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. I mean, God, we're talking about the Kerry Hurlers losing, I don't know, 10 or 12 players. Clare football lost 10 or 12 players as well. Uh, and they were within touching distance. The two teams that beat them have, have gone up, that's fair and enough. And a very good down team yesterday, like he yeah. played with, yeah. How, how good was that? He's, that's a, a huge achievement for, for Mark. Yep. You know, and not only that, he's looking like that he'll get to Munster final. Yep. You know, which will be a, a big feather in his cap as well. And he'd probably look forward to having a, a swipe a swipe off Kerry as well. You know, so that's once Kerry get, o- get over our near neighbours, Cork. Don't start that And maybe Limerick will start all <laughs> over again. <laughs> but uh, no, I think Mark will be very happy so far with, with the way he, the year has gone for him. Yeah. And it, it, it's a huge result for him, I mean, because they won five games yep. in a very competitive division uh, trying to get back of course obviously to think, but um, you, you're with the, the, the likes of the Downs and the West Meads and the whole lot um, and the other team that left them go Limerick were relegated yeah absolutely and like Mark is doing great work and his management team fair play to him he put his hand up it was a lot easier not to go to Clare because there was an exodus of players yeah. Colin Collins was gone there's always a, a rebuilding because they were in a high they were in a high yeah. he did a brilliant job and look he was in he went to the last day playing a team that were promoted it was winner take all and he can look forward to the championship now they're in the Sam Maguire you know he's he's, uh, he's, he's doing a great job Fair play to you league over didn't get us to the final lads <laughs> yeah, we're having to get better pundits a bigger push, <laughs> a bigger push. you're still talking to everyone though are you <laughs> we're talking to everyone I know is everyone talking to us <laughs> I'll have to get you bigger jackets <laughs> um, after the break uh, we will be talking hurling uh, mothers and others and we will be talking Ross the Moon uh, and if you want to get a comment in 066 or text us on 083 300 300 uh, and we'll get your comments after the break lads listen thanks very much uh, for the great efforts uh, this year during the league you'll be back for the Munster Championship of course which is just around the corner, corner. but for now we'll go to news